Hello, lovely podcast people. So today's episode, I'm not sure if you, I don't know if you read the titles, most of you, of the episode you're about to listen to, or whether it just kind of pops up on your phone and you just click start playing. Anyway, I don't normally come up with the titles beforehand, but I was just thinking about um, what the first thing I came up with was paper brains or ass slash abs. And then I, you know, because I thought that's better than qualifications versus knowledge versus appearance. Anyway, I've landed on there is zero correlation between someone's knowledge and their appearance as the title. And I've used zero in capital letters just to try and be a bit absolutist in my statement. So some people are like, well, no, uh, I want to argue. I'm going to listen. (laughs) to the podcast where I can't respond. So actually, in hindsight, probably not going to generate any extra engagement with that silly me. Anyway, I've done some posts recently, uh, the first of which I said, and I, again, I'm careful in my wording, the way someone looks bears almost no relevance to their knowledge on a topic. And, you know, I wrote an excellent caption, as I always do, and which people don't read... (laughs) Uh, Because if they did, they would be less likely to embarrass themselves in the comments. Annoyingly, though, I reckon that probably makes my engagement worse. You know, if you just write badly and you're loose with your words. So many people are really loose with their words. You know, the the kind of people who get good engagement, the people who get uh, the sort of influencer types. And they, you know, they get 50-50 people in the comments. 50% of people are like, yeah, you go, great stuff now the 50% are like this is definitely wrong you moron and it's just great for engagement maybe I should start making some per I've actually seen some meme pages where they just purposefully make spelling mistakes because then you just get loads of comments with people correcting your spelling mistakes and it just serves the algorithm well I need to stop proofreading note to self anyway yeah and it was just amazing that you know a few people the next one I said listening to nutrition and fitness advice of someone based on how they look is FC UK ing stupid was uh, that one. And then finally, application does not have a look. Because th- what happened when I did this thing about the way you look doesn't relate to your knowledge? People then were like, yeah, but, you know, you'd hope that someone was applying some of what they know. But again, it's like appli- even application doesn't have a look. Um, And I plan to do some posts on kind of genetics to discuss this in terms of what a certain level of application looks like on one person and what it looks like on someone else using, you know, actual science. And lots of you have enjoyed the science episode recently. I'm glad you like that. But understanding, you know, the the huge differences in the exact same exact same protocol an exact same kind of magnitude of stimulus on one person versus another person creates vastly different outcomes and so you know in terms of you know you'd hope so, some of the comments i actually made a note of a few of the comments just to i guess help people because I do get it when I say stuff like this you have a gut reaction and sometimes you're just too busy to actually ponder things I spend a lot of time pondering things and you know learning and looking at things from the other point of view and I get a lot of input from from people in comments and stuff so you end up getting a better bird's eye view of of different situations so yeah, I want to just kind of speak some out some of them and then just help people understand, I guess, to put it bluntly, the idiocy of their comments so they can go, oh, yeah. So actually, I'm, I'm just going to go through a load of the comments in this topic. And, and, and I guess just to say the first point of this in, in my thing, the way someone looks bears almost no relevance to their knowledge in a topic. I, I can't fully remember why I posted that. Some part of this is because... It pains me when I see brilliant practitioners and, you know, even just people following people on Instagram, asking their advice, following their workout programs and their nutrition advice based on how they look and not asking any questions of that person's knowledge, any factual 
you know, not asking for any facts of, of just blindly following it and just based on how they look. And also on the flip side, the kind of imposter syndrome that I see in many, many good practitioners that they personally don't feel like they look the right way to be able to help people. And I'm, you know, forever doing mentoring stuff around this because I'll start with this. I feel like I made a little note somewhere on this, but no, I definitely did actually. Yeah, here we go. However, some will resonate with one look and others won't. And that's a helpful thing for some of you. I know loads and loads of people who listen to the podcast or practitioners who, who've, you know, of all sorts. And I get it. People are like, I, I'm not, you know, someone commented on a post just today uh, and it was like, you know, as a thick practitioner, I think it was like T-H-I-C-C, thick practitioner, uh, I thank you for this. And um, can you hear that plane? Lots of planes flying over here. And uh, yeah, it's one of these things that for some people, there'll be an element of they'll resonate with you more. You know, I, I've often said this, people judge me by how I look and they might think I'm less caring. Uh, they might think I'm arrogant. They might... You know, literally another comment recently was like, you know, I just thought you were this cocky, arrogant, blah, 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 blah. Now I think you're humorous and super informational and I love your stuff and I'll be rubbing my love button. Um, <laughs> she actually did write that about, you know, the love button on uh, Instagram lives. Anyway, uh, that was funny. So, yeah, she was like, you've turned me. And um, so, so from this, it's like, people judge me for that so therefore they might not resonate with me so even in my social media people like they just you know they might find me too abrasive people have said that find me abrasive uh they, and it, gen often more often than not i guess it's because they judge the book by its cover you know i'm and i've said this a few times but being a little bit in the 21st century 22nd century enemy number one being a white confident male mostly straight cis cis male you know quote unquote successful etc everyone you, you sort of everything's bad everything's your fault uh yeah, woe is me but so moving on from this i want to encourage people it's like if you're someone who's actually struggled again quote unquote with your weight and you've been on a journey for instance and you People will resonate more with that sometimes than um, than just seeing someone who maybe is just they, they deem as out of reach for their attainable type goals. So that can be good. You know, you might see more. And I think, I guess this brings me a little bit onto one of my next points, which is just about... I'm not saying, people going, well, mate, I've been working in commercial gyms for 10 years. Like, I Right, well done. Ten whole years. And, you know, people are always going to judge people by how they look. I'm not saying they won't. I'm saying they're morons. And my comment was, my default is that people are morons. My default in reading your comment, mate, is that you're a moron. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just trying to be part of the positive thing of trying to remind people that judging people based on the, how they look, their knowledge, how much they can help you in your journey is idiotic. And because when people do this, they end up being misled. So I'm not I'm not saying <coughs> that also people shouldn't care about their image or shouldn't try and walk the walk a bit because people unfortunately do pick somewhat based on your image. But you also should, should, shouldn't worry. Just be you. But, you know, just thinking that, okay, how you display yourself, like little things matter. Some people might resonate with you if you just dress really casually. Some people, you know, dressing a bit smarter, you know, it's just important to think that people do judge based on looks. So you make some effort, but don't let it consume your thoughts. I, I'm always saying just be unapologetically you. The amount of kind of Mickey taking that I get out of wearing cardigans, um, but it's mostly just friendly Mickey taking. But I'm just like, it's just me. And then now people are like, oh, no, I think it's really cool. It's like your look. Um, I don't. I just don't like jumpers. I like cardigans. <laughs> I love cardigans. Uh, I, even if I, I don't like hoodies that are just hoodies, I have to have a zip at the front. Every time a clothing company is like, can we send you a hoodie? I'm like, it doesn't have a zip down the front. I either like buttons or zips. 
I don't like jumpers. It messes up my hair, if I'm totally honest. So, yeah. So, you know, people are fickle. So so there is that element. I'm not saying that people won't pick X, Y, Z. I'm, I'm not saying that the most famous people on Instagram might look a certain way. Like, that's a thing. But I don't want the little guy to be choosing people based on the way they look and being misled. Because in the world of Photoshop, performance-enhancing drugs, filters, plastic surgery, or I guess there's other types of surgery now, like... What other types of surgery are there? Just everything. Labiaplasty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why did that come into my head? Anyway, obviously that's not on Instagram. But, you know, other stuff. Implants, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Uh, you know, bum implants. And then someone sending you a glute training guide. Um, but anyway... All these things, lighting, filters, angles, like, you know, in the in an age where people can just completely mislead you, judging someone how they look is, is utterly ridiculous. Uh, I just did a, what was it, like an Instagram reel. I trained abs for the first time in as long, I don't know, five, six plus years. Obviously, I have relatively prominent abdominals. I don't particularly know anything very interesting about abdominal training, but looking at me, you, and I, I said, you know, buy my ab training guy, McDominals TM, uh, for $999. And But this is what I'm getting at, is like you judge based on this, but people always want to argue. They always want to argue the toss of it in terms of, well, you know, one of the things was, well, I wouldn't buy... I wouldn't take financial advice from a, a, fi a financial advisor who is broke, which is just a, a moronic thing to say. Because we've got this situation of, one, let's just say the first thing, there's no genetics involved in financial advice particularly. So we're talking about the human body here. We're talking about predetermined situations on based on genetics. I specifically said this, like, that I, I've kind of said about Photoshop and filters and drugs and all this stuff. But but also one of my main points was genetics. Someone can put in the exact same amount of effort as someone else and have a completely different outcome. I want to talk more about this in terms of, in the genetics episode, in terms of how people respond to a diet, how people respond to overfeeding, the amount of effort. You know, they sh You know, they should probably eat well and they should probably have some application and you know, if they call themselves a nutritionist, then, but this was the point, that application doesn't have a look. You don't know how much, how fit someone is, someone, how healthy someone is, based on looking them, looking at them. It's just not possible. Um, and this is what people forget. So, I forgot what I was saying there. Yeah, they, no, I didn't. No, I haven't. The, the financial advisor thing. So, genetics, fine. That's a huge thing. So, this, uh, you know, they're broke. Well, just on that front, okay, if a financial advisor is broke, like what if that financial advisor had got a gambling problem and they were amazing, like they had made millions and millions and millions of quid, quid, <laughs> millions of pounds, loads of money, <laughs> and they had lost it all gambling. The gambling is irrelevant, really, in the grand scheme of things. They had knowledge to get loads of money to gamble to then lose, then they got addicted to the gambling. That's a separate issue. You're just looking at the look, the outcome, rather than one, results, but also the methods employed, you know, proof of concept, etc. Which someone said to me, I, I copy and pasted it right down the bottom here, like, okay, I get it, I understand. But what if, you know, how does someone who is new to the world of being coached know who to trust if not based on looks? I'm just looking for a way to bridge the gap to get new folks pointing in the right direction and not wasting their time, effort and money on social media icons because they look good. I haven't replied to that person yet. Maybe I'll go and comment and, and say, point them this way. Like, there is a, it, there's an unfortunate degree of, it depends here. And because one thing you'd go is, okay, we look at results. We look at what results that coach can get. Now, unfortunately, you get people in this industry, and I know you know, specific people who, um, it's more in people who are 
competing and prep coaching and this kind of stuff. But do your research, do a little Google. It's all there um, of people like new, and it's often with female athletes, unfortunately, just being put on high amounts of drugs, you know, fat burning, pharmaceutical drugs that will screw you up, can do you serious harm, and then steroidal like, you know, steroids or steroidal like substances at, you know, quite high doses. That these things aren't without ill effect. And these girls going to these trainers, these coaches, whoever, and being told, oh, you want to look like that? Well, you can't just do that naturally. And almost being belittled to thinking they could have. It, it, and therefore, almost being pushed onto this stuff. And then being given the most extreme diets to go, go alongside them. People go, well, you, you know, you can't question his results. Yes, I can. Like, they are unethical results and they are damaging people then I want to see what's happened that well that person's now got an eating disorder because then that person ended up in hospital it's not good so looking at results important yeah that's great but really you need to look at the processes that are being involved you need to look at if if it's available or like this is why reviews online are fantastic I did have a friend actually who wanted to create like a, uh, what's the word, trip advisor for coaches, practitioners. I don't know if he's still thinking of doing that. Um, but again, where you could kind of rate, give someone a rating and those kind of results. You know, if you take someone like the body coach, for instance, and, you know, I, I, I'm trying to remember, was it 3%? 3% of people... I'm trying to remember the exact statistics now. I know it was le far less than 10% of people who bought the plan ever made it through, you know, the original 197 or whatever it was, pound plan. Insane, you know, failure rates. But even if you get, you know, because he was such high volume, if 500,000 people bought that plan, you know, I think their turnover in that year was something like 64 million pounds. That many people do the plan. You get a thousand people even who just get good results and you can just plaster them everywhere on the internet and go, look how good it is. Whereas, it, you know, if you go, you know, 97% of people fail this plan, it's not going to sell. So it is difficult. And this is why just doing a, at least a little bit of research around what are different people doing asking people, seeing if they've got testimonials. This is one of our things with Matt Nutrition Uni. We, <clears throat> on our student page, we like put their name. We're going to have an, uh, where we can put like their Instagram handle. So people can go and say, you know, is that really your testimonial? You said some really amazing things about the course. You know, you're a, you're a nutritionist, you're a dietitian, you're a doctor, you're a whoever. And you've said that, you know, better than your degree, better than your master's. Is that true? Did you really say that? Where did you study? So that people can go, oh, geez, these aren't just made up testimonials from Fiverr.com. These are real people. So it's, it is tricky. It is tricky. But it's about really just doing some due diligence. But more, more than anything, just trying to get out of your head, whether you're a general public person or you're a practitioner, that, that just appearance is irrelevant in these things. So, yeah, I'll, I'll point you on the way. I know it's not a great answer, but it's just, it's just take that out of the equation and then everything else that you might think to look at, you know, results. Yes, look at some of those results. Um, look at the process, like I said, look at reviews, look at all these different things. But yeah, the financial advisor thing, it's, it's this case of, well, genetics, there's a genetic component. It's not just that. Likewise, is that person still much more knowledgeable than you? And, uh, but they just lost all of their money. And this is what brings it back to like, you know, situational. If someone has, if a coach has been pregnant and put some body fat on and they're, they're like this amazing body comp specialist and prep coach is like, well, you don't look particularly lean. It's like, well, I've just been pregnant. I've been growing a human. Of course I don't. Don't judge based on appearance. The, the other huge one is, is just, it, that just undermines it's so ridiculous the idea that having knowledge like professional coaches are not necessarily looking a certain way the unfortunate thing is lots of stuff in the fitness industry is about aesthetics it's either gaining muscle or it's about losing body fat but you can put it you know with everything it's like in terms of strength you can be an amazing strength coach and not be that strong 
Uh, you don't have to be the strongest. The strongest guy isn't the most knowledgeable guy because again, it comes down to a huge genetic component, but then also an application. Have I put the time and effort in to get that unbelievably strong? No, because it's not, my job is coaching people to be that strong because I'm a, I'm a strength coach um, and I have a family and I have a business to run and blah, 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 and I coach professional athletes who who are the strong people, whose job it is to be strong. So yeah, it's just, it undermines all of this idea that, you know, you have to be applying it. You know, if what if I go, do you know what, I'm going to compete in strongman. So I want to put on size, I want to be heavier. I just want, you know, to be heavy, not necessarily in purely increasing muscle mass. And so I gain some body fat because I might deem that to be useful for the sport in what I'm doing. And then people go, look at me and go, you know, how you don't know much about nutrition. Why? Because I've got more body fat? Well, that's not that you need the will to want to apply that knowledge to achieve XYZ goal. What if someone doesn't want to have big muscles? Uh, but they're super lean, but they don't have big muscles because they're they like rock climbing. They like being light and super lean and strong, etc. So they don't want to just add unnecessary muscle weight. So, like this whole idea that appearance has anything to do with it. One of the best comments that I did like because it actually oh, where is it? Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it now. Silly me, I should have like highlighted it because I knew I knew I liked it. I'll see if I can find it as I go through. It essentially was saying you'd think that probably someone who was a trainer, strength coach, personal trainer would do some training. And you'd think that someone who's a nutritionist or a nutri a nutri nutrition practitioner would have a better diet than the average person. I, I could, and, and then he said, but obviously that doesn't then lead to a, a look. And I was like, yeah, fantastic. Like it, let, if we forget the end point of what someone looks like because of those habits, great. Because that's also what we go when people are being judgmental and they're like, oh, you're unhealthy. You need to get off the couch. One absolute gimp of a woman who is a, what was she? Public health something or other parliamentary member for the something childhood obesity something she just left a disgusting comment about oh well you shouldn't if you're going to leave people you shouldn't look like a flight of stairs is going to kill you i was like oh my goodness like please tell me you're not actually what it says in your bio it actually makes me kind of angry like i'm literally thinking i never actually posted on my story and just abused her but it's just like oh martin that's just not nice to do that but i'm just like oh you i just want to Ugh, drives me mad like what a gimp that this person has actually got any seat at the table on discussing childhood obesity when that's the stuff that she spews out of her mouth online but you know you, uh, you know I, and i was fairly fairly balanced and nice when i responded to her but she was just more of a gimp in her replies anyway but again what does looking like a flight of stairs will kill you mean you know someone who who genetically has a higher level of body fat like society has skewed us down of what the, the difference between healthy and you know like now it's like if you don't have eat, abs oh you may you just carrying a bit of extra fluff it's like no i'm just a normal human being it's it's kind of crazy how things have been skewed so oh, i sort of went off on one about that gimp woman didn't i application Yes, yeah, tending to, it, it doesn't have a look. And therefore, yes, I do think probably someone who, there's a need for more than just theoretical knowledge. So that was when I was talking about the title of like paper, brains, or ass slash abs. And it's like, you know, qualifications. But again, another thing that pe people kept commenting on was, oh, well, actually, practical experience from coaches who've done it in the trenches are really, you know, rather than just having a qualification. I literally never mentioned qualification in a single one of the posts that I did on this. Um, but people just have this bias of like, well, I didn't go to university, but I'm just a great coach. I've worked in commercial gyms for 10 years. Unfortunately, like, th you do need to have learned from the right people. And it because you otherwise it's just like I've learned by my n equals one experience with a whole hundred and fifty clients. It's like you're just a moron if you haven't looked outside, looked at. This is when I talked about science. Why science helps us because we are human. If we just observe stuff, we make 
often incorrect observations in our kind of reductionist uh, I explained about reducing it down to the simplest answer um, you know well when this person cut out gluten and they just lost weight and therefore the gluten was really just causing inflammation like people pick up these dumb words that they just stick in you know it's the cortisol once we controlled the cortisol everything got better <laughs> lol so yeah like qualifications versus the practical knowledge so that person saying you know you'd expect them I would expect them yeah to probably just have trained a bit so that they understand what they're coaching if they're a, if they do coach training stuff and if you are a nutrition practitioner to have a somewhat good diet just paying some attention that like people go you have to practice you have to look like you practice what you preach no incorrect get away from the look but yeah if they're just like eh, I literally couldn't care less what I eat. It's completely random. I'm completely controlled my, by my environment. I don't make any intellectual decisions. Th you would call into question that individual of, I don't know how much you really understand the practicalities of, of things. But it doesn't have a look. It's just that they probably should care. I'm not, again, it's, it's also a case of my diet is 50% fantastic you know people talk about 80 20 mine's genuinely 50 50 but i still have 50 percent good and decisions made and then 50 percent of just pick and mix sweets and squashies <laughs> but having zero percent of that is where the issue that's where that person's comment was good they should have a you know a better diet potentially than the average person great yeah cool but not the best diet and it doesn't have a look so yeah like this whole like qualifications i'm I would never praise qualifications because I have such a dull, dim view of most nutrition qualifications in the world. I really value individual people and the effort they've applied in their ability to take what they've learned and see where the deficits in their learning have been and to continue to learn as a lifelong learner. I have several high-level qualifications and I uh, was uh, am now and over time was aware of all of the deficits in my knowledge that I needed to keep learning through both practical experience and learning from others and reading etc so qualifications no like that's never what what I'm talking about in terms of this knowledge knowledge is both you know the theoretical and practical from application but it's about this it doesn't matter what someone looks like and it does amaze me that I get any kickback on any of these posts. You know, it's when someone said, when it comes to people's physiques, uh, yeah, it kind of does. And I was like, I've literally written a well-worded a good, well -worded post explaining to you why it doesn't. Dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like this podcast gives you a bit of an idea of what goes through my head when I'm... And then you see me replying, thanks very much for your comment. <laughs> I don't always reply... I'm only human though. When you get comments like that, you just think, oh, you absolute goon. Right. I'll just see if there's any other comments here that I think are worthwhile. This was, you know, I wish clients got this. I have an MSc in exercise science, but I have disabilities, so don't look perfect. But my knowledge is good. It's a loss for them out there. You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, that's a real kind of nice one to just obviously explain how ridiculous the idea of linking the way someone looks to their knowledge. Well, it obviously depends. More than likely that someone, if this actually was from a coach slash trainer slash like I looked at his Instagram, more than likely know something if they have or have reached a reasonably lean physique. Think you're playing to the crowd with this one, mate. You're not my mate. I said, this is an incredibly naive and surprising comment that you think leanness requires knowledge. It's just, ah, uh, it's, I, uh, yeah, it's just dumb, isn't it? It's just dumb. I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm reducing it just to that statement. It's dumb. The whole podcast does explain why it's dumb. I'm not just being unnecessarily ad hominem in my attack. So yeah, I'll do more posts on this. I'll think about it more. I think as well, it'll come, to some of this, this stuff I really want to talk about. This will be a wisdom episode, I think. And the next one will be a nutrition slash physiology genetics episode where I will talk about specifically you know, genetic differences in responses to exercise and the, the magnitude of that and how different it is and point you to some of the research on that. And like I said, like when you can say to someone, I, like I'm going to do a, a, a recorded reel today about eat less, move more, like, oh, you just eat less, move more, being obviously use, useless advice. But 
in terms of someone putting in effort and and the outcome of that, like I'll I'll, I'll when I I'm not going to link this research in this podcast. I'll do it in the next one. But you can give two people the same number of you go right what's your maintenance what's your maintenance right both of you eat an extra thousand calories a day and the difference between those people and what happens is wildly different there's there's multiple different studies on this and it's very interesting like for instance in terms of neat like the upregulation in neat due to overfeeding so someone like me who doesn't put on weight easily and there you know there are much more extreme versions than than I you you give them an extra thousand calories and some people get fat and move less, get fatter and move less. And some people move loads more and gain lean body mass, gain muscle from those extra calories. Like, and then people go, oh, you, you know, you're lazy. Look at you, you must be lazy. You haven't got good habits. What? I go to the gym, I'm exercise, I'm really fit. All my health markers are really great, but I've got a bit of extra body fat because of my genetics. People are like, oh, you're just using your genetics as an excuse. They're not an excuse. They're an incredibly powerful factor in how someone looks. And in the, the, you know, this, people often ask me, is body fat set point a thing? Like, yeah, like it's got really strong basis in terms of the body defending some sort of set point, at least downwards. Unfortunately, not, you know, and some people not upwards. I say unfortunately because of our society, but just your body will gain body, some people's bodies will gain body fat quite easily, but will just defend it going down to any great extent. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, I'll, I'll do this genetics episode to follow on. Was this, this wasn't nutrition, was it? Was it nutrition, wisdom? Oh, it's tricky. It's more of just a rant. I <laughs> hope you found it helpful and interesting. Um, thank you for all your reviews of the podcast recently. Really appreciate it. Like, went to its highest ranking or since the podcast was released when it was really high. But yeah, until next time, much love.